live from Augustana Lutheran Church in the heart of Portland, Oregon, under the leadership of the Reverend Dr. Mark Knudsen, we are celebrating this fifth Sunday of Easter, Anno Domine 2023, in joyous accord with Lutherans and believers worldwide. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Alleluia, Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Alleluia, Christ is risen indeed. Today we are worshiping as one church in person and virtually through our live stream. During the prayers of the people, please feel free to type your petitions into the chat. We ask that you help this community take the message and good news of our Lord and Savior to the nations. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it.
Good morning. Good morning. Christ is risen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Christ is risen indeed. Yes, we are still in the Easter season as we experience the risen Christ daily in our lives. As we gather for worship in this house of prayer for all people, welcome to Augustana. We are a thriving, multicultural, multinational, multigenerational solar sanctuary congregation called by Christ to work with our siblings, Native American spiritual leaders, Muslim and Jew and Hindu and Buddhist and Sikh, other Christians and people of faith and people of just goodwill to weave the beloved community where everyone is welcomed and affirmed for who God created you to be. That includes all of you, your ethnicity, your age, your human sexuality, uh, all that makes you you is a gift from God created in God's image and a gift to this community together. And together we work to see the justice and peace kiss. And so we work to renew the creation for generations to come. The waters of baptism remind us of our calling. The word we will hear read and sung remind us of our calling. The sacrament of bread and wine, Christ present among us, as you are the hands and feet of Christ. So welcome to worship. If you're new virtually or in person, a special welcome. You are in the right place. Community and service, love and hope. Raise up as you are able, please, and let us join together in the opening litany, the thanksgiving for baptism. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God in whose hand we are given new birth, by whose speaking we are given new life. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are welcomed, restored, and supported as citizens of a new creation. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. Glory to you for oceans and lakes, for rivers and streams. Honor to you for waters that wash us clean, quench our thirst, and nurture both our crops and our creatures. Praise to you for the life-giving waters of baptism, the outpouring of the spirit of the new creation. Satisfy the needs of the world through this living water. Where, there, where drought dries the earth, bring refreshment. Where despair prevails, grant hope. Where chaos reigns, bring peace. We ask this through Jesus, the Christ who forgives us all our sin, who with you and the Holy Spirit reigns forever. Amen. Let us join together in the opening song, Give Us Your Peace. Jesus, give us your peace, bring us together, let all the fighting cease, shatter all our hearts of stone, give us a heart for love alone. Oh, oh, Jesus, give us your peace, bring us together.
of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Join me in the call to worship. My spirit is one with you. And the people said, My spirit is one with you, great spirit. spirit. You strengthen me day and night to share my very best with my brothers and sisters. You whom my people see in all of creation and in all people, show your love for us. Help me to know, like the soaring eagle, the heights of knowledge. From the four directions, fill me with the four virtues of fortitude, generosity, respect, and wisdom, so that I will help my people walk in the path of understanding and peace. And the prayer of the day. Almighty God, your son Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Give us grace to love one another, to follow in the way of his commandments, and to share his risen life with all the world, for he lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever.
The first reading of the day is taken from Acts, chapter 7, verses 55 through 60. A reading from Acts. Filled with the Holy Spirit, Stephen gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Look, he said, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. But they covered their ears and with a loud shout, all rushed together against him. Then they dragged him out of the city and began to stone him. And the witnesses laid their coats at the feet of a young man named Saul. While they were stoning Stephen, he prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he knelt down and cried out in a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. When he had said this, he died. The word of the Lord. reading for 1 Peter. Like newborn infants, long for the pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow into salvation, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. Come to him, a living stone, though rejected by mortals, yet chosen and precious in God's sight. And like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in scripture, See, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone, chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. To you then who, be who believe, he is precious. But for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the very head of the corner, and a stone that makes them stumble, and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the word as they were destined to do. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of whom you called, whom, of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous, marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have rece received mercy. The word of the Lord. I think that's going. There we go. You want to come sit down or you want to come stand? Come sit down. Then we'll splash you with water later, okay? <laughs> Got to get that in. Would you mind get that mic right there? Would you grab that hand mic? There you go. And the chair there? Got microphone? The mic, the microphone. All right. You know, Sunday school is coming to an end pretty soon. And you get another month of school. So if you don't mind, just pass the mic and say who you are in your school. And if you grade, you want to say that, but hold it close up, because I know you're all public speakers. My name is Espen, and I go to Sabin Elementary. My name is Ursula, and I go to Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. My name is Anik. I currently go to Tubman, but we'll go to Grant next year. Oh, you're already looking ahead to Grant. Okay. I Typical eighth graders. <laughs> My name is Tabor. I go to Richmond Elementary School. All right. I'm Ollie. I go to Beverly Clary, and I will also be at Grant next year. You got the blue on already, both of you. <laughs> and for the three of you, we'll be talking to your parents. We're going to set up a good first communion class uh, soon, because I know you're all ready, and you already can serve it. I do want to say to parents, elders, family members, uh, part of the role of this congregation is to be uh, a leadership development congregation. As you hear in the reading from Peter, talking about all of us being part of, of this church. And one of the things I revel in as a pastor is watching our young leaders 
Start by introducing yourself when you're very young. And then read lessons, acolyte. We'll be doing a lot more of that because every time you do it here, everybody here loves you. So it's a great place to practice your public speaking. They, they're, they're just cheering you on. Like, oh, that's my granddaughter or my daughter or my son or who. They're proud. And that's good because we need your voices, whether it's through a public voice or through art or through poetry or whatever it is, music, whatever it is you do, it changes things when you do it out of God's love. I think we're probably almost done there. But, but I want to um, tell me something you'd love to do. Let's go opposite. Uh, dancing. Dancing. Uh, I play instruments. And I know I you do, do yes. All right. I also play instruments. All right. I like to ski. Okay. I like bouncing on my trampoline. Say what? I like bouncing on my trampoline. Trampoline, okay. So we're hitting a whole segment. So one part of the church is, I want you to remember this, is that when we come together, we come from many directions. We want everybody to come and feel welcome, right? I hope you always feel welcome. To feel like they're in your second home. I love it when some of our little kids who haven't been in church during the pandemic, younger than you, come back and they start running all over this church as if it's their second home they haven't been to it for a couple of years. And, and that it becomes a very safe and loving place. And you know what we call it? We call it a sanctuary church. Can you say sanctuary church? And that means many things. It means um, if a person is here trying to make it, it's so hard to make it when you come from another land and they're afraid, they feel like they may be sent away, uh, they can come here and be sanctuary. It means when people come to worship or to a support group that they feel safe and they have a home. Your homes, you want to be safe, right? And God's church. Because God intends for the whole world to be sanctuary. Every place should be safe for everyone. But until we get to that day, what you're all going to make happen as you grow up, we have to create places of sanctuary. So this is a piece of art that was done for Augustana a while back, actually by a relative of mine who's an artist on the coast. Let's see a picture. Picture, is that love? A parent loving and holding a child? And it's a sanctuary. So it means everybody who enters here should feel safe. They can have their voices heard as you need to and grow in the gifts God has given you. So you're part of a very important place. This is your church. It's God's house, but it's your part of it. And you're Christ's hands and feet. That's a lot of one little moment together, but remember that. Invite others, because a lot of people don't feel like they have a safe place to grow and be and get to use their voices, their art. So invite others this summer. Come on and see how good God is. Have a great worship. I just love seeing you all, and have a great rest of the school year, Sunday school confirmation coming up pretty soon. Have a great worship. Thank you. If you want to give the sermon for me today, too, I'm, I'd welcome you up to the pulpit. Please rise as you are able. The Gospel Acclamation. Alleluia. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to John, the 14th chapter. Jesus said to the disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to, to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and, and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may also be. And you know the way, the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the father and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the father. How can you say, show us the father? Do you not, do you not believe that I am in the father and the father is in me? 
The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his work. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. The Gospel of the Lord. My father's mansion's many rooms Have room for all of his children As long as we do share his love And see that all are free And see that all are free to grow and see that all are free to know and free to open or to close the door of their own room. What is a room without a door which sometimes locks or stands ajar? What is a room without a wall to keep out sight and sound from all and dwellers in each room should have the right to choose their own design and color schemes to suit their own Though differing from mine, yes, and each door has its own design to suit the owner's state of mind and those who'd want them all the same don't understand the human game. The choice is ours to share this earth with all its many joys abound or to continue as we have and burn God's mansion down. My father's mansion's many rooms have room for all of his children if we do but share in his love and see that all are free. Thank you, Marilyn, for that. You've sung that at many places in many times, and it's always silent, people listening. To come into church today with the prelude, then to sing Give Us Your Peace with three soloists in a band. We've been hearing that piece just now. It doesn't get much better than this in church. If people are looking for a home, I encourage you, invite them to this house of prayer for all people, that they may grow and love and help to shape the community in which we live. 
Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, on this fifth Sunday of Easter, we come to more somber texts. We hear the first Christian martyr, Stephen. And we hear of Jesus' reassurance to his disciples the night he was betrayed. May that word of hope that you give us dwell in our hearts, that we might share it with others. Now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Jesus said to his disciples, do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my father and mother's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself so that where I am, there you may be also. In today's Acts lesson, we hear these words filled with the Holy Spirit. Stephen gazed from heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Look, he said, I see the heavens open and the sun of God standing on the right hand of God. Stephen, who was one of seven who were chosen by the first apostles to, to serve the food, to be a servant leader, because the apostles wanted to be out teaching and preaching. Early on in the church's life together, different roles got assigned, none any less important than the other. I was reminded by that on, on I'm always glad to hear our local radio put on faith leaders for conversations. And on Friday, they had three pastors. Uh, oh, I, don't have their, I know them, but the woman pastor downtown at First Congregation of UCC, the woman pastor at St. Peter uh, on, on 82nd in Bonavilla, Villa, and a pastor on the Oregon coast where the city council voted the church cannot serve the hungry anymore unless they pay $750 a day. And, and these three were talking about what it meant to serve in the midst of a pandemic those who are often shunned or pushed away because no place was open. No dwelling place. And, and the moderator, it was, on, it was on our public radio station, asked one of them, he, said, he asked, well, what was it like to have so few in worship during the pandemic, but so many showing up to get a meal? And these pastors all agreed. Serving meals to those who are hungry was worship. Many dwelling places, Jesus says. Stephen, like any good follower of Jesus, did his task, but in the doing, he shared the good news of who Jesus was. You can't, you know, our Moses movers and all that, all the ones worth the food, bank, you can't keep them from testifying. But work leads to greater testimony, often much stronger. And he testifies and gets in trouble and is stoned to death. They dragged him out of the city and began to stone him. And the witnesses laid their coats at the feet of the young man named Saul, who later became Paul. But while they were standing, stoning Stephen, he prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he knelt down and cried out in a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this against you, them. And when he said this, he died. Both Stephen and Jesus died unusually, unjustly. They committed themselves to God in the process. And they had words of forgiveness on their lips. If we think the violence in America today is new, Every generation has to stand up against violence. I think of the siblings in Allen, Texas, yesterday. We have two Lutheran churches there. I'll be contacting their pastors, Christ the Servant Lutheran Church, and then an Indonesian Christian Lutheran Church in Allen, Texas. I can imagine the pain and suffering that is being felt. Nine dead, many more injured. And in America, it shows up on the 10th page of the Oregonian today, which should have been a headline again. 
We cannot grow numb. Violence is not new to this world we live in. But that witness to the risen Christ is a powerful witness. I was listening with horror OBGYNs in this country who are being threatened for caring for women. They had a group from Washington State on the border with Idaho. And, and, and to even practice now as a threat. And women are dying because the laws that are being passed in so many states are violent laws against women. Let's be clear about that. This is not... As people of faith, we can never be silent. Wherever there is injustice, when people start taking power in their own hands, whether on a subway train or on a front porch, where usually the victim is a person different than them, usually darker skinned than them, there's something wrong. But it's not new to the world we live in. Pastor Mark, can't we just have a nice, quiet sermon today? I know the feeling. But you know, walking into this church today, there is such a beautiful peace and welcome that we can be ready for moments to talk together. And I know when we leave here today, we're all going to feel refreshed and renewed in our calling that is before us. Stephen trusted, commended himself into God's gracious care. And so too do we. Jesus, speaking to his disciples, spoke of many mansions. Well, in the King James Version, it's many mansions. But in this one, it's many dwelling places. This passage from Scripture in John, coupled with that from Acts about Stephen, reminds us sometimes how somber the faith journey can be, because I'm sure this passage from John 14 will be one of the ones used at various funerals around this country in the coming week. It's one of the go-to passages. And just to be honest with you, whenever it's used in a service I do, I drop one line. So I never know who's going to be sitting out there in a service. Another faith tradition, no faith at all. Do I want people to be excluded? And often people misinterpret what Jesus was saying or what was written down. Thomas said to Jesus, Lord, we do not know where you are going, after Jesus told them about many dwelling places. How can we know the way? Jesus said to them, I am the way, the truth, and the life. I stopped there. Do you know why? Because if I go on to say, no one comes to God, the Creator, except through me, a lot of people suddenly feel like they're left out of the picture. And that's not what Jesus was talking about. He wasn't saying it's a litmus test to know who God is. But he was saying he is the way. If you want to know God, know Jesus. As Lois Grum, one of our elders, used to always say, if you want to know God, know your scripture, know Jesus. And so as we think of this passage today, Jesus is telling them that he has come that they might have a place, a way. The other day we had two of our church-wide leaders. One was actually a teenager when I was doing national church-wide work. And now at 40-some years old, Vance Black Fox is the director of of indigenous ministries in the Lutheran Church. And he came here because we're going to host a seminary class in the coming three years for indigenous leaders here in Portland, and we'll be the site. He came with Dr. Moses Punamaka, who's director of uh, New Pathways to Ministry at our seminary in Berkeley. As they came in, I always have them come to my office and sit down and sign into a guest book. And as they were signing in, I held up a Bible I have, one of my many Bibles, but one I have good memories of. It was given by Reverend Dr. Kane Hopefelder, who was a professor at Ho Howard University. And Hopefelder put together the first ever African-American edition of the Bible. And it became very popular in many places because people were seeing themselves depicted in the pictures. But if you go to John chapter 14 in this edition of the scriptures, this is what the passage sounds like. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In God's house are many mansions. If it were known not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. 
Does that saying by Jesus only speak to the sweet by and by? Oh, it's comforting to know that when we leave this earth, God has something special waiting for us. That's an important message to hear. So you're not afraid, but you can keep living life fully in this moment in time, trusting that the God who would birth us into this world would also take us someplace new. But is it limited to heaven? Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. What about mansions right here on earth right now? When our colleagues were here the other day, I had to meet with Marilyn Keller, with Rachel Thompson, with, um, okay, now i got to think quickly, Andrea Robodeau, Francisco Aguirre, and who was the fifth? Kalo, yes, thank you. And we had this two-hour conversation in here, telling stories, and often the story was about safe places and hope. Reverend Penamalco said to me later, after hearing Francisco's story of living here in sanctuary, sleeping under the altar, he said, Mark, after I heard how you're going to connect mansions, not with the future, but with the present, he said, Francisco Aguirre's mansion was sleeping under our altar. Did you hear that? Francisco Aguirre's mansion with ice circling the church was sleeping under the altar. In God's house, our mother, father, are many mansions. And the word mansion depicts something pretty amazing. I showed my colleagues that I had them sign my little book on my desk because I have everybody that comes through from other places to sign in, and we've got some incredible visitors over the years. But one was Vicki Nakashima Bach, a, a, a great author from the Bay Area, and she had just written a book about the church before the Middle Ages, or the Dark Ages. And at that time, they were talking about in some places, if we're going to prepare people for heaven, this is going to be so wonderful, why can't we make their last years on earth wonderful too? Okay, come on, U.S., all this wealth, that those who are elders should get the best. How many other people would love a mansion today? Cinco de Mayo, we just came through all the celebrations on Friday, and yet, how many people in the world are seeking a, a mansion, just a little hut, a little place, some place is safe? How many elders are, are worried about their Social Security being cut because there are fanatics in this country who want to cut back on services that people have, have deserve? How many are sleeping on the streets of this city who have be, become made the problem versus people who are just seeking to make it? John F. Kennedy wrote a book in the 50s, The Immigrant Nation We Are, and he spoke about how difficult it is to come to a new land where you don't speak the language and people may be judging you and you're just trying to find a place to dwell. Where are the mansions right here, right now for those who may need them? Jesus prepared his disciples for what would come next. Stephen believed so closely he put his life on the line serving food but testifying to the goodness of God. Jesus said to his disciples, Very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will do the works that I have do. In fact, you will do greater than these. Jesus is saying to us, you'll do greater works than Jesus did for the sake of others. Think about what that means for us as the church today. Church, it can be overwhelming to think how we're going to make sure women's reproductive rights are safe that black lives matter, that shootings will end, that the earth will be saved. But it starts right here, right now. I know our young leaders, they grow up, they're going to make a difference. They already are. I track all our young leaders across this world. They're doing amazing things. And their faith is a big part of that. But you have to start right at home sometimes, right here in this sanctuary. Think about it. What can we do together? What was Vicky Nakashima Bach talking about? Creating heaven here on earth. A U.S. Surgeon General who was brilliant came out the other day, Vivek Murphy, and he said, loneliness, isolation is a pandemic in the land. Somebody said, Mark, you put too many illustrations in one sermon. That's all right. <laughs> There's so many stories all around us. We mentioned several other pandemics, violence against women, 
violence with guns, violence against persons of color, against immigrants, the earth. But he said isolation and loneliness are a pandemic. And he mentioned faith communities as key organizations in this society to help people through it. And so we can start right here, right now. When you walk into this sanctuary, this house of prayer for all people, there is a peace that passes all understanding. When you come together and share the peace with one another, there is a connection with other people. How often do you get to sing with strangers until you get to know them? How often do you get to pray for each other? Hold somebody's baby who's only five months old. I mean, that is pure gift. How often do you got to talk to somebody who's been around nine, nine decades who can still talk about making a difference with habitat or other things? This is one of the few places in our society where there is connection, there is relationship, and out of relationships and love for one another, we learn to love all around us. We learn to be a people who are trying to be the ones who follow the words of Jesus to love one another as he has loved us. We have a gift to share, church. These waters of baptism aren't just for us. They're for everybody. So in the coming weeks and months, it is our calling to call up sisters and brothers and siblings who are not in church lately, maybe for very good reasons, many. I know that because to get back out is not an easy thing, but some may be just uh, are not sure about returning after a couple of years. Call them up. Go to the ones you know first, but then look for others on the bus, at the park, anywhere. If you see somebody alone, say, hey, I've got something for you. I'll never forget standing in Washington, D.C. on the way to a doctoral program, and a woman came up to me and said, come join us. I said, where are you at? She said, well, I'm at the Buddhist temple right across the street. I went with her by because the invitation was just genuine and real. You never know who was hungry to be invited to taste and see that the Lord is good. In my mother or father's house, there are many mansions. We have a place and a gift to share. God bless you today and always. Amen. Survive. 
please rise for the act of faith. We believe in God, mother and father of all, who has called us all to work together to build a new world of unity and peace. We believe in Jesus Christ, son of God and our brother, who suffered, died, and rose again for us, that we might learn to live for others and find hope in his victory over death. We believe in the spirit, the power of truth, of peace, and of love. We believe in the church, the unity and fellowship to which all are called, that we may heal the shattered world and find a new and better life through Christ our Lord. Amen. The prayer response this morning is, your mercy is great. God of life, strengthen your church to proclaim your gospel, even in times of trouble. As we remember Stephen, we give thanks for diaconal ministry. Bless all deacons and strengthen them for their bridge-building ministry between church and world. Creating God, you show your steadfast love through mighty waters, towering mountains, verdant fields, and arid deserts. Protect the Earth's diverse habitats from the forces of pollution, erosion, extinction, and global warming. Hear us, O oh God. Loving God, you make your home among us. Abide with refugees, those experiencing homelessness, those fleeing war and poverty, and all who question if there is a home in your heart. We pray for all who are sick, especially those on our Augustana prayer list. Hear us, O oh God. Rejoicing in the victory of Christ's resurrection, we lift our prayers and praise to you, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. And now, sh please share the peace of the Lord. God's peace to you. Now, how many dwelling places and mansions do you get like eight or nine pieces all at once in various forms? You can't beat that. We have a moment of uh, mission, and as this is being said, we invite the ushers to take the offering, and chair of our green team, come on up. We're doing a name shift as we move into the future. You can stand wherever you want. Thank you, Mark. My name is Robert Morse. I am uh, the chair of the Care of Creation team. Um, short version is the green team. And um, we are currently working on projects to help green the church. We did the solar panel um, array that was inaugurated back in uh, February of last year. And we're currently working on a project to install new water heaters. So we will change out the old gas-fired uh, water heaters that have reached the end of their life and install new high-efficiency heat pump water heaters using the excess power that we have from the solar array. And Ro Robert's used to cheering in stadiums and things, but go ahead, keep going. Yeah. <laughs> So uh, regarding funding for this project, we have good news. We applied um, last month for a PCEF mini grant, and we got the news that we were granted the grant, $5,000. So 
So we're um, about um, up to speed in terms of the funding. We need about another 2,000. And we've decided to change the solar project fund into the green fund for ongoing projects, including the water heaters. So um, we have appreciated your support so much for the solar project. And we look forward to your support for the green projects coming up. Thank you, Mark. So Robert, we, because part of this is, is we're a teaching congregation, like we have been for Sanctuary and Indian Gun Violence and so many other things, uh, being diverse, uh, multicultural. What if um, we're getting real close to be zero imprint, a footprint at all, and, and actually we're running energy back. Could you work on getting the first solar stained glass windows in the country ready to go? <laughs> That's the next project. There must be a panel that could go on we'll, then. We'll put it on the agenda. <laughs> all right. Thank you, Robert and Elizabeth Morris, for leading that committee. And in the next two weeks, we'll have a special one-hour congregational meeting by Zoom. We have a sewer issue we have to deal with, and it, it, it's not cheap. But anytime we do uh, anything more than a certain percentage of the church budget, we always have a meeting just to okay it to move forward. There's also good news on the payment of the roof for the solar. That's almost taken care of, so you're going to hear that too. So uh, watch for that. It'll be a very brief meeting. It'll be a very focused agenda. We just need to say, yes, let's do what we have to do, and we'll have a plan on how we'll do that. So with that said, let us rise up and give our offertory prayer and move into the service of Holy Communion. And for anybody here for the first time, I hope you feel at home and we welcome you back any day of the week. Let us join together in the offertory prayer. And as you commune today, if you wish to splash the person behind you, there's plenty of water in the font. Let us pray. God of good gifts, receive these in all our offerings as we present them in faithful service for the sake of your gospel. Prepare our hearts to receive you in this meal as you pour out your very presence through Christ, the wellspring of eternal life. Amen. We invite those assisting with communion to come forward at this time and let us join together in the service. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is it indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb, who gave himself to take away our sin who in dying has destroyed death, and in rising has brought to us eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter, and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea, and all their creatures, with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy, mighty, and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and the suffering, who embraced the ch child, lifted up the stranger, freed the prisoner and oppressed, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup. Gave thanks. And gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. 
Remembering, therefore, his death and resurrection and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom, with you and the Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord's Supper is prepared. Of course, all are welcome to receive it. We will have processional communion today, two stations. Uh, the first chalice is wine, the second chalice is juice. We'll use intinctions. We'll take the bread and dip it in the wine or the juice. Again, all are welcome to receive this supper. So I'll take a tray. I just have to go on the right side, but be behind me. Children, do not fear. Though you suffer as I suffered, I am always near. Come to the Lord. Come to the table of lasting life. Bring your burdens. There is no price. Just come to
Please rise as you're able. Now may the body and precious blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you this day into life everlasting. May you depart in peace. Let us pray. We give you thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. In your mercy, strengthen us through this gift in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. As we go out today, one very important thing to share. In two weeks from today, we will have um, confirmation for a large number of our students. And we have the privilege the next two Sundays, this one and next, to meet with them individually and hear their stories again. But keep that in mind. On the 21st, not only will there be the confirmation, but then at 4 o'clock in the afternoon, we have a large gospel concert in this sanctuary. So invite others to come back for that as well. Marilyn will be welcoming people with me as well uh, for LaRonda Seals Gospel Choir. So let us go now with God's blessing and benediction. Thank you again to the musicians. It's been a pure gift always. Again, how often do you get to find a mansion or dwelling place with just incredible music every time you walk in the door? That's gift. May you go forth to do justice. May you go forth to love kindness. May you go forth to walk humbly with God and with one another. And may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of God, creator, redeemer, and spirit. Amen.
go in peace, serve the Lord with great gladness. Thanks be to God.